AccuCare Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine in Brick, New Jersey offers a state-of-the-art facility with all the best and current treatments. With athletic trainers, massage therapists, and doctors of physical therapy, AccuCare has everything you need to stay healthy and perform at the highest level. Cupping, stretching, laser therapy, compression boots, and a full-body cryo chamber are just some of what you can expect at AccuCare. Check out their website and social media links in my bio. No prescription is needed to see them. So so call them today and start feeling and performing at your best. Again, thank you to AccuCare for sponsoring the Shore Football Report. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the AccuCare High School Football Preview Show, Monmouth County Edition. Today, we are going to talk Madawan Huskies football with a good friend of mine, head football coach, Coach Jay Graber. Coach, thanks for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. Awesome, man. Finally got you on, on TV. Um, you've been very quiet the last couple of years in the shore. I consider you a good friend. We have a lot of good conversations on the phone. And now people are going to see how we really interact on here. Maybe we're not friends. I don't know. But, <laughs> Coach, I, I have a lot of things I want to talk about today about you and your program. But first, I want to brag about my team, my my team, the dream team. I have two new additions. I have now a sponsor, AccuCare, in Brick. It's right around the corner from your house still, right? So, when you tweak an ankle or get hurt walking to practice, you can go to AccuCare anytime. And Pam Anthony, the founder and owner of AccuCare, is on the same page as us. She's all about the athletes, and she wants to be available to all the athletes in all the schools in the short conference. She's tremendous. State-of-the-art equipment. Coach, you know you're an athlete, and you've coached many, many years. You like your athletes healthy, right? Yes, <laughs> it sure helps your your plays move a little better when you're when the alignment of their backs are, are the right way. But they're great people. I'm excited. You're going to hear a lot about them during the season. Pam Anthony and AccuCare. So we're proud to have them. The other person we have is Scott Stump is back in the shore. I don't know if you're so familiar with them because you were out in was it Mercer County? You were in Mercer yeah. County, but he's a long time one of the top sports writers around here. And he came back out of a mini uh, phase where he was away for a couple years. So he's back with us. You might not know who he is, but you will know who he is this year. He's a great writer, and we're excited to have him, Scott Stump. About you now. About you. Wow. Wow. Now, I don't want to uh, embarrass you, but I do think very highly of you. When, when, when the phone shuts off, I do speak highly of you. I really do. And you are a... Um, you know, you, a success story. Following your career, I think you played ball at um, shoot, Notre Dame High School, right? Successful there. Then became the head coach after being an assistant for a couple years at Allentown. And you took over Allentown. I think it's tremendous. You turned the program around. Coach, when we played Allentown way back in the day, we used to, we were at Lacey. We beat them 56 to 3. My other buddy was a head coach there, and they were winless. Um, Henderson was there. And just the culture, the perception out there at Allentown is nowhere near what it was when you were there. And it's a credit to you because you created a culture, a winning attitude. I love the way you look at things and, you know, there's no excuses. And you turned them into a playoff team. You've been to the state finals twice. I don't want to bring up the loss you had, but that was huge. You lost to um, Delcy in overtime, Group 3, in 2014. But then in 2016, you beat a short conference team in Brick Township, Group 4, 
um, to win. Was that the, the first championship in school history at Allentown? I believe it was. Yeah. Awesome. I was at that game. And I remember talking to you after it because you created ideas in my head. You were going so fast with your no huddle and you were wearing them out. You had these mammoth linemen, you had this athletic quarterback and you were running the pistol and you were doing all these unique things. But I loved your tempo on what you created and talking to you more later on afterwards, you practice what you preach. That's what you do in games and practices in games. And that was just nothing, but you had fun doing it. Coach, tell me something. What did you bring to Allentown that was different in the past that created the, the, um, a perennial playoff atmosphere at Allentown? It was really nothing that I did. You know, it was just a testament to the players and the student athletes. They bought into what we were trying to do as a team and as a program. And, you know, all the credit goes to them. They invested the time and effort into themselves. And as a result, they were able to have a lot of success. Coach, but the one thing about you, and you're being very modest right now, but you're very creative. You're very detailed and you don't let things slide. Like it's not okay to run something if it looks sloppy because you're not going to be successful more times than not. And I love your, the way you, um, you know, the way you view things and practices and games, because you're a perfectionist. You're not very happy at times, right? I don't know if you know that, right? But I know what your aim goal is. You want to be there at the end. You want to win a championship or you want to be the best you are every day. And that's your approach, right? Well, for me, it's, it's all about the players. It's all about the student athletes and what they want out of the experience and the, the whole situation. That's what we try to do. That's what we try to provide as teachers, as mentors, educators, and coaches. We try to see what their goals are, see what they want to do as, as players and then as a team and a program. And then we try to, you know, build off of that. Now, the thing I was excited about when I heard that you were in the running for the job at Matawan, I knew as a short conference coach that you would bring a lot of credibility to the short conference. Because I, to me, I think it's great when coaches with, with your type of resume come in because it just makes it that much better. You want you want the best. And when you came in and got the job, I called you up and, and I, I was sincere about it. I really was very, very happy for you. And and all of a sudden we had to tighten our things up because if we had to play a Matawan team, you knew when once you get your program intact, you were going to create a culture that is going to be tough to stop. And you're doing a great job at Matawan. It's your fourth year right now. Um, it went fast, didn't it? Four years at Matawan. Yeah, it's gone fast, but we're excited for the opportunity that we have this year. You got a young team. But you got a lot of athletes. You're excited um, and a lot to be. Coach, I'm excited to talk about Matawan football today. I really am. I'm glad I got you on the show. Are you ready to talk Matawan football? Yes. That's Coach, it. I'm whipping that thing off. Let's talk about getting back to normal. No more COVID. No more pods. Temperature checks. It was terrible for all of us, but mainly the kids. You got your program rolling. And then COVID hits. Talk about a speed bump. You had you had it going. You, I, Coach, when we were talking prior to it, you were really excited. Then all of a sudden, oh, my God. So you're a new coach in the program, getting it going. COVID hits. You had to restart. Those seniors have not did a normal offseason workout since their freshman football season ended. So you're talking about kids not knowing what's ahead of them, uh, progressions and offseason. So you had to reteach your program this year. Tell me how great it was and tell me what a normal off season is at Matawan under you as a head coach. We, we really stress playing multiple sports. I'm a huge proponent of being a multiple sport athlete. So the first thing that we stress to our players and our kids is to get out and play a sport, whether it's in the winter, spring, summer, get out, play a sport, be involved, be competitive, be a part of the, uh, district in the high school and the programs that we have mm -hmm. but if they don't play a sport for that season we do you know, we have a lifting program a running program and basically most of what everybody else has and for us it's all about 
building and developing relationships with the players, building and developing that attitude and uh, work ethic that they need in order to be successful and get to where they want to get to. And I know you're the basketball coach too, a uh, freshman, right? The freshman coach? Freshman coach, yep. yes. And you had them, the weight room was open for them prior to practice, after practice. You, you always had it accommodating for the guys and get your competition here and, you know, and build for the future here in the weight room. I, I know always talking to you, you, you love those guys competing because the weights don't compete, but you just don't like the kids that, that don't compete with, with sports or don't even lift. They play this game called, what's it called? PlayStation, you know, <laughs> or Instagram, you know, the worst thing in the world is that you and I did not really have as much back in the day, but, yeah, you're a big. It's important for Madawan to have all the athletes kind of transition from sport to sport, right? I think it's important. It's important for the school. It's important for the kids. I just think that you know when you play a sport and you're involved, it creates great time management, creates the ability to know and understand how to be effective and productive, and it's great life lessons for the kids. And I, that's what I think that they need. Now, coach, you have a lot of connections in colleges. A lot. And don't tell me you don't, because I talk to the same college coaches, and they talk about you. So I don't. Let's let's scrap it right there. And you got some good-looking kids in your program too, coach. How important is it to have the rapport with the college coaches like you do uh, when you're bringing it now to Madawan? Sure, it's important. I mean, right now, what I think is most important is that the the student athletes understand what their goals are. They, you know put the time and effort to invest in themselves and what they need to do academically and athletically. That's a lot about what we talk about, worry about the things that you can control, put your feet on the ground right now and, you know, live here, live now in the moment, do the best you can do day in and day out. And all that stuff in the future will come. That's mm -hmm. all a product of your daily process. So that's a lot of what we talk about in our program. Yeah. You always stress to your players about taking care of your, taking care of the stuff that you can take care of athletic academics. No one else is doing the, like you are what you are. And that's the biggest, biggest number is not your 40 yard dash, not your bench press, how many dunks you can do. It's your academics. Cause if you don't have that coach, those coaches go right by Madawan, right to the next place. Right. So that, that's no different anywhere else. Academics is important and you're a big educator in the classroom. And, and um, I have a lot of respect for that, what you do. Uh, with that interest in off season coach let's hear your coaching staff sure uh matt walsh is going to be our defensive coordinator works with our uh, defensive backs and linebackers jake weber works with our defensive linemen and our offensive linemen sam turner also works with our o-line and our d-line uh, rob Waiteka, he's wide receivers d-backs and then he works with our special teams nick hardigan who is our special teams coordinator. He also works with the running backs, linebackers, and he's the freshman coach. Uh, Rob Cordasco, who is our head freshman coach, also works with the tight ends, fullbacks, and the O-line, D-line. After that, we have uh, Coach Martucci, who's back. He works with the running backs and the linebackers. Uh, coach Sean Ramcharam, former player, who works with defensive backs. And Mark Kalka who is back with us. He was a running back for us, and he works with the running backs, the linebackers, and then he does some stuff with our scout team. Coach, I love listening to coaches when they talk about their coaching staff, and I don't know what I'm going to say when I, when, I, when I hear them doing it, and then I come up with ideas. But I remember when you came in, I mean, you're an outside guy. You are an outside guy that came into Matawan, and now you have two coaches from the past, guys that I know very well. Longtime head football coach Joe Martucci on your staff, great hires, and Sam Turner, the longtime loyal assistant. You have two guys that have been there for years. The amount of experience from not only with football but in that community was real important, probably for you and your staff. Tell me something. Have having two, I don't want to say older guys because they're going to watch experienced guys on the staff like that. How important was that to have matter one experienced guys like that on the staff? It's fantastic. They're, they're for the players. They're for the student athletes. They align with the same vision that I have when it comes to, you know, coaching and doing what we can to uh, 
uh, develop a successful environment for our kids and our players. But, you know, those guys are great. And we have the rest of the coaches, too, that are uh, pretty good, well entrenched in Matawan. Jake Weber played at Matawan. Sean Ramcharan played wow. at Matawan. Uh, Matt Walsh teaches in Matawan now. So we have a lot more uh, people from Matawan that are involved. That's great. That's great that you got a lot of guys that, that probably, you know, I know Coach Martucci is probably coaching guys that he coached their relatives, you know, and all that. but that helps. It, it helps. You want to have guys like that in your staff and having two guys like that or Hall of Fame coaches on your staff is, is definitely a benefit on your staff. Good. I agree. It is. And, you know, there's no ego with this. It's all about doing what we can to create the best environment and, opportunities for for the players so those guys are right in line with the way i i think coach what can we be expecting offensively defensively in your schemes what are you running offensively we're going to be multiple set we're zone counter power and then play action like do a lot of quick game and then defensively we have an odd front and even front end so we're going to try to be multiple there with the players that we have Coach, this segment I really liked, I put it in this year, was talking about top position groups. As a head coach, you know you rather have a wealth of numbers of people in your individual groups than, than that you could work with other than just one star. You want to have multiple guys that you could throw in and out that will help win your offense, defense over. So I broke down you guys, and the short football report is going to, Tell you what I think is your strength. Now, you can put me in my place anytime. My wife does it every day. That's not a big thing. But here's the strength of your team when I looked into you guys. I think it's your O-line offensively. And, Coach, there is a guy out there, and you're going to agree, Nick Windsor may be the top player out there that nobody knows is out there. He is a dude just committed. He committed to Cornell, right? Columbia. Columbia. Um I mean, what an athlete I've heard. I, I, coaches have been raving about him, college coaches. Like, oh my, he just came out of the woodwork, this guy. But he does it academically. And that's what separated him, coach. Not, to, not, that, not that he could dunk a basketball or he could run a five-flat 40, um, being 270. This guy is something special. Okay, we'll get to him. Uh, somebody else. And then Jaden Elijah. This kid's six seven three fifteen. That has so much potential. He probably doesn't even know the potential that he has. But coach, one day he's going to turn the switch, and this kid is going to be a big time football recruit. He potentially could. And you, if there's anybody that knows about it, you would. And then Zion Spence, I think that he's the most re, one of the most reliable guys out there. He plays O and D. But those three dudes, you got Nick Windsor, a Division One commit. You have Jaden Elijah, who it's going to have some offers, I think, at the end of this year into the spring. And Zion Spence is just a solid senior football player. Those are your strength of your eyes. Would you agree? Yes, I would agree. Tell me something about Nick Windsor that nobody else would know about. He never played football until midway through his freshman year. Oh, my God. He's just, I mean, he's grown then as an athlete, huh? He he's an incredibly smart guy. And then when he started playing football and track and field, he's a fantastic track and right. field athlete. Also, yeah, he just, he invested in himself, the time and effort, the work ethic that he needed in order to create and develop a lot of opportunities for himself. And we sat down one time and we talked about what his goals were and talked about, how he had to get there every day and right. he did it to the T and I think that he's going exactly where he wants to go academically and he's going to play division one football. So we're really proud of him. We're happy for him, excited, and hopefully he can continue on this path, which I know he will because he's just a fantastic young man. So he's goal driven, apparently. I mean, if you're going there, I mean, to, to be committed before the season, whew, you know, let's focus on what's fun. And then you got the other guy. The other guy who's playing the other side of the tackle that I hope he sees what Nick did and how he went through it. Cause this guy, Jaden coach can jump on the radar big time. If you know, 
if things go the way we think it's going to go with that kid, because that kid is so athletic, so athletic. So you're very fortunate to have these three guys. Jaden has great potential. Uh, needs to continue to grow and develop as a student and continue to put the time and work in as an athlete, which he's been doing. And you know, we're really excited for the opportunities that he, he could have down the road here. And Zion Spence is a four-year starter on the offensive line and defensive line. He's our rock up there, and he's very versatile as well. He can play tackle. He can play guard. So we're excited for the opportunities that all of these guys have this season. That's great. So offensively, I was correct with his strength, right? Let's talk defense now. For now. For now. For now. Yeah, all right. Now, now your strength on your D, I think, is your D lineman. And I think you got Nick Windsor as a D tackle and you have uh, Lance Santos as a DN and Zion Spence also as a DN. I think there's solid defense alignment. I think that leads your defense. I think that's your strength. I would agree. And you know, there's three or four other players that are really competing for those jobs as well. So I'm not really sure that those will be the three guys towards the end of the season mm -hmm. or as we get going here, but the other players that are, uh, on the offensive and defensive lines are really working hard and we have a lot of competition in those two spots. So we're excited. Awesome. And I want to end it with special teams, long snapper. And there's a kid on your team that kind of does it all. Joey Bowden is your long snapper, right? It was that right. All right, good. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about him and the other positions and then the long snapping, which is just as important, but Joey's your inside linebacker. Um, he plays wide receiver, which is a rare mix. Usually linebackers are running backs, tight ends, but he's a skill kid that, that football savvy, I guess you would say. And he's your long snapper. I mean, in key moments of the game, he's got the football and he's slinging it back 15 yards. And you know, that's a position. Nobody knows who the long snapper is unless he sails it 20 yards over his head. So, but you know who you got. And Joey Bowden is a very important guy on all phases of the game, correct? Yeah, he's one of our pillars here. Uh, he's a three-year starter, undersized a little bit when it yeah. comes to playing linebacker. Mm -hmm. But he does a fantastic job. He reads his keys re really well. He's quick. He's fast. He hits. And then as a receiver, he, he has great hands. He, he's a good blocker out mm -hmm. there, and he runs very good routes. So – over the course of his time here, he's really grown and developed into a good player for us, and we're excited for this the season that he can have. Nice. I mean, when you have a good long snapper, I mean, it's not like you look forward to bunting, but, you know, it's something that if you don't have a good long snapper, you definitely are not looking forward to bunting, right? All right, Coach, before we end, end it, tell me something about the 2022 Madawan football team that the Shore Football Report should should know about. Well, I think that we had a great off season. We had a strong spring and summer. I think the kids are really motivated and dedicated to the craft and what we need to do. I think that they're really excited to get back to some normalcy here after a couple of years of some rules and regulations that we had to follow based on COVID. So overall, I think that the attitude in our team and our program right now is fantastic and you know, looking forward to what we could do over the next couple of weeks. Nice. Well, You'll be playing some Ocean County teams, which I do live in Ocean County. So it's going to be different for you. I mean, you've coached in Mercer. Now you're in Monmouth, and now you're coming to play teams as far as Pinelands down south. So it's going to be something different. you got to be excited for you as a coach to, to play different people in different areas, right? Yeah, well, it's, it's never about me. You know, it's always about the kids and the players and – you know, when it comes to the schedule, that's something that we can't control. So we yeah. just play who's on the schedule to the best of our ability. And Yeah, well, well, you know, a lot of people don't know nothing about your philosophy yet because everybody's scramming, you know, hey, do you know anything about Coach Graber? All of a sudden now they're looking probably over Allentown film and Madawan film the last three years. So there's a lot of newness to your schedule, mainly your division. So I think that's exciting. You know, I think it's exciting when new teams are playing each other. I just wish they kept the divisions intact more than just one year with that. So, well, Coach, I want to thank you for coming on the show in the middle of your summer and your scrimmages. 
Uh, I'm sure you got to try and enjoy as much summertime as possible over the weekend, you know, with your family. I appreciate it, Coach. Coach, if you need anything from me, you let me know. Sounds good. All Take right. care, Coach. Go Thank Matawan. You. All right, what's up? Now we got Matawan football players, and we got four darn good ones. Not only good football players on the field, but even better ones off the field. And that's coming from Coach Graber. And that's pretty important, right? Yeah? Yes. Cool. All right. I know I'm taking away your time. You're probably reading books and preparing for school right now, right? Or are you chilling out, getting ready for football practice? What are you doing? Read books. Read books? Well, Nick, you just committed to a to an Ivy League, didn't you? Yes. yes do, I do. do Ivy League guys, like, read summer readings just for the heck of it? Or, <laughs> like, I don't know. I never no. – I'm I didn't really, know too really many guys. Well, congratulations <laughs> to you anyway. I'm only joking with you. Yeah, but, you. yeah, I don't I, – I, I didn't know anybody that smart back in the day, right? You know, nobody ever mistaken me for being a smart dude. All right, here we go. I got five questions for you guys. I'm going to introduce you guys, and then we're going to get right into it. Seven minutes for five questions. We got it? Wave your hand when I call you. To the left, um, we have outstanding wide receiver, inside linebacker, senior Joey Bowden. Joey, thank you. Right in the middle right there, we have senior offensive tackle, defensive end, Nick Windsor. Nick, thank you. To the right, up top right, we have senior wide receiver, uh, safety, Cameron Cooper. And least, last but not least, we have senior offensive guard, defensive end, Zion Spence. Guys, thank you. This is awesome. Let's get right into it. I did a study on everybody in the short conference. After I get these five questions from you, I know everything about Matawan. I don't even have to go into your games. I know exactly what's going to go on. All right? These are very important five questions. Are you ready? Here we yeah. go. Is first there... first one is this. Who's the funniest student in the program at Matawan? Who makes Coach Graber laugh? Come on. Who's the funniest dude in the locker room? I need to know it. Shore Football Bobby, Report needs to know who's the clown Bobby of the Palumbo, team. Who? Jordan Reamer. Reamer? Bobby, Colin Palumbo, Jordan Reamer. Jo- Jordan Reamer? And Colin? Colin? What do you think, Nick? I got, I got Jordan. So Jordan's yeah, pretty Jordan. funny. Yeah, Jordan. Coop? I say Amir. Amir yeah. Martinez. The quarterback? Yeah. yeah. So there's a lot of joking around going on with the center and the quarterback, huh? Good connection. Good connection. <laughs> good connection. Oh, that's good. So you got sophomores that are funny. You got some linemen and uh, skill guys. I like that. Zion, do you agree? Yeah, I do. They're funny. Now, does it make Coach Graber laugh and Coach Martucci, who I know for a long time, mm-hmm. do they laugh at the jokes? <laughs> sometimes they laugh. Sometimes they yell. Okay, good. They probably don't understand all the jokes, too, right? Good. All right, good. Number two. Number two. Who is the leader of the team? Who sends out messages to everybody when Coach Graber and the staff needs a message sent out to the whole program? You know, via group chat or Instagram DM. Who does that on a team? Nick, who does it? I mean, I don't know if there's just a single guy, but the the guys in this call are definitely the ones that are, you know, leading the pack. Okay, is that true? That is true, yeah. So you have, what is it, group message or what is it called? Group chat. group chat. So when you send it, everybody gets a notification every time somebody says something on it? Yeah. Yep. Can they, it can get kind of annoying if somebody does a thumbs up, then everybody hears the, the notification signals? Sometimes. No? Yeah. Sometimes. That's, it's good and bad when you have those big chats like that. You guys don't abuse it, right? You don't get messages at 3.30 in the morning. When somebody press something, right? No? Nope. All right, go. Practice in the morning. <laughs> Number three. Now that we are back to normal with um, no more COVID, knock on wood, how great was it, Joey? How great was it to be with your players in the weight room in the off season, back to normal? Yeah, it was a grind. We, I loved it. It was, uh, you know, we were working all off season, getting ready for the season. I mean, we've had Raritan in circle for a long time now. Right. Z- ready to go. Zion. How great was it lifting with all those linemen? I mean, it was uh, it was great getting back in the weight room, you know, making sure everybody's there, you know, everybody putting in that work so that we'll be able to be ready for the season, you know. Great. Cam? 
the weight room, the energy in the weight room is just unmatched. It's just great being in the weight room with my guys. Right, great. Nick, you like throwing a weight yeah. around with all the guys there? Of course, yeah. It's a great experience. It's it's just something different for sure. So you don't like social distancing, do you? No. No, either do I. Nice. Number four, I already know what the expectations are with Coach Graber. We talk, we talk many times throughout the weeks. I want to know what the expectations are with you guys, the players. And, Cam, we're going to start it with you. What's your expectations for this season, for your football team? Well, I'm trying to win the division mm -hmm. for, to start. Good. And then have a go run in the playoffs and state chip. That's the goal. Nice. Great. Nick? Yeah, I mean, winning is always the goal. So we're, we're trying to do that as much as possible. Right. Zion? I mean, I'm expecting to have my best season here at Matawan, so I'm expecting us to do great. Great, great. Joey? Yeah, it starts with week one. You know, we want to win every week, go one and up, and then hopefully win the division and make some noise in the playoffs. So expectations, I think you could agree, are pretty high. I would agree. Yeah. I'm going to give you a little secret. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Yep. Last one. Um, tell me why is it so special? To play football at Matawan under Coach Graber, Zion, start with it. Start with it first. Why is it so? Why is it great to be playing at Matawan under Coach Graber? You know, all of the players, we all have a great connection with each other. You know, the chemistry over here is great, um, especially with the people around us. You know, we all know what we're doing. We all know what we have to do. And Coach Graber makes sure that makes sure that you know we do everything that we have to do to be able to be ready. So. Nice. Joey. Um, you know, Madeline hasn't been what it's been in the past last couple of years. And, you know, we really feel like this is the year that we make some noise and get back to what it should be. We have the talent on the line, athletes to make plays on the perimeter and win some games. Nice. Nick? Yeah, I mean, kind of what Joey and Zion said. I mean, Madeline has a great tradition. And we're trying to reinstate that. I mean, Coach Graber changed the program over at Allentown. So, you know, having that in our program is, is really great. Nice. Cooper, end it right now. Tell me why is it great to be playing at Matawan under Coach Graber? Coach Graber, he's just a, a good coach. He's great to play under. And he trusts me, and I trust him with his coaching. His play calling is great. I, I, I kid you not, I know Coach Graber since he was at Allentown. A lot of respect for him. Good friend of mine. All right. Uh, I like his values. I like how his professionalism, how he goes after it. Um, doesn't joke around a lot, guys, but we got to work on that. You understand that? You got to get Jordan Reamer and you got to get Martinez all and, and Colin getting him to smile a little bit more. Um, guys, tradition doesn't graduate. And you said it yourself, uh, Nick, that you have tradition there. You do. And you guys have something special this year. You have outstanding coaches. You got very talented football players, and the four guys I'm talking right now are true leaders. You got that's the makeup of a good football team. All right. Enjoy the moment. Love your teammates and have fun during football. All right. Sir. Appreciate it. All right. Sure football report wants to thank you for coming on and make sure you follow us every week. We got stuff going on all week. All right. You guys good? Yes, sir. All right, guys. Yeah, take care. This will be up tomorrow.